I'm a huge fan of the Speedmaster. I've owned more than a handful of them before, and this 1957 reissue from the 90s is one that ended up in my permanent collection. So let me be the first to say that there is no alternative to the Speedy, because there is no watch story better than that of NASA, Apollo, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and the moon. But I've had the chance for a couple weeks now to spend with the Zen 356, not just one, but the older one, as well as the new release from late 2023. And it clicked. This watch reminds me a whole lot of the Speedmaster, but for less than half the price of one, did the Germans pull off the impossible here? Hey guys, I'm Max and this is Watch Crunch. It's getting harder and harder to have real discussions on the internet anymore. Nuanced conversations have been replaced with hot takes and hashtags. And that's why we created the Watch Crunch app, a modern discussion platform built from the ground up for talking watches. So come join us, it's free. Helmut Zinn founded his watch company in 1966. Being a former World War II pilot, he applied his expertise in navigational instruments to his watches, and it shows in every fiber of the Zinn 356's aesthetic. This one was released in the late 90s, and is a German take on the pilot's watch, clean and straightforward. Just like the Speedmaster, the original 356 puts legibility first, with white Arabic numerals on top of a matte black dial. At first glance, there's a lot going on here, but the elements do manage to stay well balanced and stay out of each other's way. And it's not all business and no play on this dial. The syringe hands, they taper to a fine point, and even the subdial hands have an arrow tip that is, might I say, quite elegant. At the three o'clock, we get a day-date window with matching discs. Day-date windows make me a little nervous because they can be big and dominate a watch's dial, but in this case, it's divided down the center and it blends well into the background. A domed acrylic crystal casts all kinds of lovely distortions along its edges. I know people are gonna complain about acrylic, but I wouldn't have it any other way here. It just makes this watch feel vintage-y and I mean, I keep a tube of poly watch around for when I wanna rub one out with my watch. It's sort of like a bonding experience. As a professional instrument should, the loom is surprisingly bright for a 10 plus year old watch, and the presentation has that flight display on your wrist kind of feel. In many ways, the Zen 356 is deceptive in terms of its proportions. The diameter is just 38 and a half, but has the wrist presence of almost a 40 mil watch, in a good way, because the bezel is quite thin and the dial feels expansive. Additionally, the pump chrono pushers and the squared off crown guards extend the watch wider than the stated size. Now, the main reason I have waited so long to get the 356 has been its 15 and a half millimeter height. If I see anything even approaching 15, I usually just swipe left. But this was the biggest surprise on the wrist. I've never met a watch that hides its height better than the 356 uh, for a combination of reasons, but biggest one is the crystal takes up a lot of that height. The mid case construction makes this watch wear more like a 14 mil. Best of all, the lug to lug is just 45 millimeters, so it's friendly even for the small wrist that amongst us. See, my usual recommendation for people just getting into the hobby is if you want a diver, get a Black Bay 58. If you want a chrono, get a last generation Speedy as your first mechanical chronograph. But this Zen is really starting to change my mind a little bit. I bought this watch from Delray Watches for about $2,000 and I just gotta put in a plug here. The buying experience was really positive and the watch is in fantastic condition. I do just love the idea of supporting Federico for all the free watch knowledge that he's bestowed upon us through the years on his YouTube channel. But seriously, if you are not trying to pay for all that historical factor, I say save yourself two grand, you can skip the speedy, and you'll find that the Zen is maybe a more special watch because there's a lot less enthusiasts wearing one. Okay, now let's fast forward two decades to September 2023. To celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Zen 356, we got this watch. I do see the inspiration, but the Flieger Classic is a completely new watch. Zen has taken the finishing up a notch along with the price. At $3,500, it is a premium for sure, but I actually find it justifiable for the following reasons. The new watch eschews some of those tactical military aesthetics for something that feels more luxurious. The case has cleaner lines, tighter tolerances. We lose the bead blasted surface for brushing. 
Um, the H-Link on the old watch was very industrial, very brutal, and had a dull surface, but the new Fine Link bracelet is much more refined, has a more reflective brushing finish. The glass is also now sapphire, still boxed and sits above the bezel, but it's lost those tasty distortions. But hey, at least you don't have to worry about scratches anymore. The watch comes in a few different versions, including a panda and a reverse panda like we have here, which actually doesn't have a black dial. It's a matte brownish background they call anthracite. It's an interesting choice. It gives it almost like a tropical aging look. And this is contrasted with silver subdials with the radial engraving that really pops in the light. The hands, they're still syringe shaped, but now they have polished silver surrounds. Again, everything is a little bit more refined, a little more shiny, and a bit upmarket. The watch with this bracelet combination reminds me a lot of Breitling. Both watches use versions of the Salida SW500, but you can only see it through the new watch's display case back. The Salida is a modern reincarnation of the Valju 7750, which as we know is a reliable blue collared chronograph. It's easy to service, but it is quite thick. It's cam operated, not particularly fancy, but finished well enough to be easy on the eyes in the new watch, providing a full 63 hours of power reserve. I feel like if the old 356 is a speedy alternative, as we talked about, then the new one is like a Navi timer replacement. It's a modern pilot inspired luxury watch. And with Navi timers pushing 10 grand these days, Zen is really putting forward a strong argument to go German. These two 356s share almost identical proportions, but they feel like they really hail from different eras. If the older 356 is that World War II pilot, you catch him on a smoke break between dogfights, the new 356 is that pilot retired from the war. He's moved to the city and he's turned in his wings for an evening at the jazz club. But which one do you like? I hope you have Zen on your radar because I was genuinely surprised by this purchase. I think it's gonna get a lot of risk time. All right, y'all. See you in the next one.